what else causes anemia. I'm going to pop a slide up on the screen for you so you can, you know, have a better understanding. So, okay, first and foremost, obviously, nutritional deficiency, as we've just spent a good 20 minutes talking about, nutritional deficiency is a major cause of anemia. Okay, dietary deficiency, so not getting enough calories. So calorie malnutrition would be kind of part of this, but it would also be micronutrient malnutrition. So what are some things that can cause nutritional deficiency aside from just not eating enough? Inflammatory damage to the intestine. So if you've got a diagnosis, again, gluten sensitivity, celiac disease, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, gastritis, esophagitis, any of the itises that go from your mouth to your anus, right? These are all potential reasons as to why you might be malabsorbing or not getting adequate nutrition. If you um, have those problems, again, inflammatory and not just intestine, but inflammatory GI tract really would be a better way to put this. That could potentially lead to poor absorption of vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients. Now, another common cause that I see women, this is when you cycle. So when you're going through your cycle and you have heavy cycles where there's a lot of blood loss, remember blood, when you lose blood, you lose a lot of iron. This is a very common cause of iron deficiency anemia is heavy bleeding or heavy blood loss during cycles. We see a lot of women develop transient iron deficiency anemia over over a heavy cycle and it can take a few weeks to, to rebuild the blood volume back up. So one of the things that you can do as a just kind of a general tip, ladies, is if you like it, eat liver before your cycle and during your cycle to help accommodate a lot of that nutrition that you're gonna lose during that blood loss period so that you can minimize the anemia effects of a cycle. Now, heavy blood loss or trauma can also cause anemia for a lot of people. I've seen people go give their blood and a lot of times they'll check you for anemia before they'll allow you to give blood, but sometimes they miss it. Sometimes there's a person with kind of borderline uh, anemia and they'll get that blood drawn or that, that blood donation. And that again, blood loss in that way can cause anemia as can blood loss from traumatic injury or traumatic, like a surgery or something else. So, you know, these things are generally transient because if your bone marrow is working right, you're going to reproduce new red blood cells to take the place of the ones that were lost as a result, uh, as a result of, of that blood loss. So additionally, we can see, aside from known blood loss, we can see a problem with occult blood loss. This is a really common problem. And again, usually where this is takes the, where we see this is in inflammatory GI problems, but occult blood loss and, and occult blood loss, what does that mean? That means you don't see it coming out. So like if you're taking a bowel movement and you're not going to see blood in the toilet per se, that would be like a hemorrhoid where the, you know, where the damage um, was, was in the rectum itself and you could see the bright red blood coming out in the toilet. But when the blood loss is occult, it means that the damage is either coming from further up north. So like your stomach area or your upper small intestine and the blood, by the time it comes out in the stool, it's brown. It turns brown. So the blood turns brown. You don't really see that it's there. That's why it's called occult blood loss. Okay. Because the color is not bright red. You don't really know that it's there. So one way to detect occult blood loss is to have uh, a stool sample taken and they can check it for occult bleeding. So if you have chronic iron deficiency anemia and you have for a long time, you know, rule out gluten sensitivity, certainly, but also rule out any kind of inflammatory GI problem that might be leading to occult blood loss, leading to that kind of ongoing anemia that never really fully corrects. One of the other ones that is very common is a growth spurt. See this sometimes in kiddos when they shoot up really, really quickly. So we're talking about an inch plus growth almost, you know, almost overnight. You can always tell with kids when they're about to hit a growth spurt, uh, especially in relatively thin children, because they're going to poof out. Their cheeks are going to pop out. They're going to start packing a little bit of weight on, and then they're going to shoot up. So when you see the cheeks puff out, that's a sign that there's probably going to be a growth spurt that's on the way. 
Those growth spurts can lead to transient anemias because their body is requisitioning nutrients to build new bone and to build new muscle. So again, we can end up deficient in some of these things during, during a quick growth spurt. So watch your kids. Your kids should never be lethargic, have brain fog, be fatigued. They should generally feel pretty energetic. And so if you start to see in a child any of those symptoms I talked about before, that's a, that's a hallmark sign to get some of these things looked at or get some of these things checked, nutritional deficiencies, et cetera, and see what needs to happen. Now, um, from a food perspective, there are a lot of things that you can do for anemia. I mentioned iron before, uh, um, or rather, I mentioned liver a moment ago as a great source um, of, of iron nutritionally. Red meat is a great source. Bison is a great source. Any Really, any form of animal meat is a pretty good source of iron, although your red meats are a greater source of iron than, say, chicken or turkey. Um, now, if you're trying to follow a vegetarian-based diet or plant-based diet, you know, you got to understand that some of the iron found in plant-based foods is a little bit harder to get to. The plants have substances in them that bind. So, for example, spinach is a good source of iron, but because of the oxalate content of spinach, the oxalate binds the iron and makes it harder to absorb. Now, what some people do uh, in a vegetarian diet when they're eating that spinach, for example, is they might take in, and they might add citrus with that spinach. So like lemon or orange wedges or grapefruit wedges because the ascorbate or the citric acid in the citrus actually helps free up that, that, that iron in the plant so that it's easier to absorb. We know that vitamin C improves the absorption of iron, which is one of the reasons why you see vitamin C on this list of causes because vitamin C deficiency can reduce the ability to absorb iron from plant-based sources. So if you are on a vegetarian diet and you're, you know, a lot of people that come to see me originally are on what I call a grainitarian diet. It's heavy grain, but there aren't really a lot of fruits and vegetables. It's just mostly grain shaped like cereals and breads and pastas and things of that nature. So they're really on a poor diet because it's loaded with grain, but there's really not a lot of vitamin C in it. And so there's no real opportunity for them to get good quality iron from that food because they just can't get to it. They can't absorb it. It's hard to absorb iron as well from uh, grain-based foods. So the sixth thing that we might see as a cause of, uh, of a cause of the anemia would be medication. Now, Medication, a lot of people are probably jaw dropping right now, but medications, many of them have long lasting profound impacts on your overall nutrition, causing nutritional deficiency. So for example, you know, one of the most common medications used in industrial countries is for acid reflux is a number of medications, but Nexium and Prilosec and Tagamet, um, these are just examples, your proton pump inhibitors, uh, or your histamine, your H2 blockers. These are just examples of drugs that, that reduce stomach acid. Now, when you're blocking stomach acid, you have to understand you need acid to absorb iron. And so that can cause iron deficiency anemia. You also need acid to absorb protein and copper. You need acid to absorb vitamin B12. You need acid to absorb zinc. So this is an example, just kind of one example, classic example of where a medication might induce nutritional deficiency that can lead to the symptoms of an anemia. Other medications that are a common cause of occult blood loss are your non anti-inflammatories. So if you take NSAIDs, aspirin, ibuprofen, Celebrex, um, naproxen, these medications create even at small doses, create ulcers, create erosion of the mucosal lining of the stomach, the esophagus, and the small intestine. And in so doing, they expose areas, tissue that can become damaged and start to bleed. So it contribute to ulceration. Now, if you mix non anti-inflammatories with steroids, the problem is, is, I think the last research study I read on this showed a 10 10 times increase, whereas if you were just using one of these alone, when you add them together, they actually synergistically work to increase your risk of developing ulceration by tenfold. And so again, that can create a, a loss of blood. Wherever that ulceration is, you're slowly bleeding out into the intestine. And by the time it shows up in your feces, it's actually a cult blood loss. So if you're on medications for pain, steroids, non anti-inflammatory drugs, 
know that those medicines can damage your GI tract, leading to slow loss of iron over time. That includes a baby aspirin. Many of you might be taking baby aspirin for heart disease, and you know, you're thinking it's only a baby aspirin. The dose isn't that big. Well, guess what? 7.5 milligrams of aspirin, which is about one tenth of the dose of a baby aspirin, is enough to cause gastric bleeding. So even enterically coated, we know this, it's been really well studied. So um, aspirin, you can add to this list of very, very common medications that people take that can contribute to the iron loss through blood loss and, uh, and contribute to the anemia. So those are your big causes. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.